All right. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the uh, 144,000. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Baal Shem Yahushai for giving us this knowledge, this understanding of the Bible, for so keeping us in the faith. Um, again, all praises and glory is due to Yahweh Baal Shem Yahushai. Baal Shem Kadash, which means in the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Um, so this video uh, will be a response, a reaction, if you will, to a video that was put up by uh, Elder Karatiza, Karatiza Ba of um, of uh, GMS Baltimore. It's a brother I've met. A little cool brother met him and his family um i'm damn near to the end of this video and this is a good video uh elder karazza makes a lot of good points in this video so i just want to add to basically my video is an addition to his video the title of his video is sakari says paul is the author of confusion what did Paul really say to Agrippa? Because uh, you're going to hear in this video, this dude, this wacky tacky Christian, probably of vocab's camp or no, knows vocab. One of the things that they're trying to do, you know, vocab and those wacky tacky Christians that are associated with him, they're trying to say that Apostle Paul in his conversation to Agrippa was trying to turn Agrippa into a Christian. Now, keep in mind, um, the so-called Christians, or the Israelites, rather, they were called Christians. Okay, so basically what they're trying to say, vocab and these wacky-tacky Christians, is that Apostle Paul, in his conversation to Agrippa, he was trying to turn him into an Israelite, which is virtually impossible. Okay, look, if you're born of a nation, like Agrippa was born of the Edomites. Agrippa was an Edomite. If you're born an Edomite, that's what you are. You're of that nation and you're going to be judged as being part of that nation. Okay? An Israelite cannot become an Edomite. An Edomite cannot become an Israelite. Okay? And um, one scripture that proves that is the parable of the rich man. Let's go to that real quick. So if they're trying to come on that angle, oh, Apostle Paul was trying to make Agrippa an Israelite as in a Christian, that's virtually impossible. Okay, and I'm going to prove it with this uh, scripture of the parable of the rich man. The Heavenly Father put a separation between nations. Nations cannot integrate people. Let me say that one more time. Nations cannot integrate the Heavenly Father put a separation between nations. Matter of fact, one scripture comes to mind. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. And there are other points I'm going to make in this video using Elder Karatazar's video. Okay? Um, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Let's read that. Because the Heavenly Father divided to the nations. That's what, that's what we're going to read. Deuteronomy 32 and 8, when the Most High, the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh, right? When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, divided to the nations, each nation got their inheritance, all right? When the Most High divided to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he separated them because we all came from Adam, right? But he separated the sons of Adam into different nations, you got the Hamites, you got the Ishmaelites, you got the uh, Japhites, right? You got the Moabites, you got the the um, uh, the Edomites, and you got the Israelites. Okay, and if I didn't mention any other nation, you get the point. We're all separate. The Heavenly Father is the first separatist, and one nation can't integrate into another nation. It's impossible. Okay, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, that's the key word there, divided, when he separated the sons of Adam, see, 
He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Why? Because the sons of Israel are his chosen people. It's true he created all nations, but the sons of Israel, as in the Israelites, are his chosen people. He separated them. In other words, he separated them from, uh, to be his chosen people. He separated them. Let me say that one more time. The Heavenly Father separated a certain group that came out of Adam to be his chosen people. And the word Adam, don't get tripped, tripped over the word Adam. That The word Adam just means from the ground, Adama in the Hebrew, which means from the ground. We all came from the ground. But there was a certain group of us that the Heavenly Father separated to be his chosen people, the Israelites. Okay? So there you go. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. There you go. <coughs> the Israelites. And they'll always be his chosen people. And only the Israelites. The seed of Israel. You have something called uh, Yazari Allah in the Hebrew, which means the seed of the power. The seed of Israel. Those are his chosen people. So now, let's go to the scripture. Uh... The example which shows you a nation cannot integrate. And this is proven by the parable that Yahweh Shai taught us. The parable of the rich man. Now the rich man represents the rich man represents the Edomites in this parable. And Lazarus, which was the poor man, the beggar, represents the Israelites. Because we're on the bottom right now. Okay, we're under these curses, Deuteronomy 28 chapter. And the rich man, those are the Edomites. They're in power right now. Okay? They are in power right now. There's even the scripture where it says they are not in trouble as other men. Yeah, because they're in their glory. They're in their power. So now listen to what... Uh, listen to what Abraham in this parable says to the rich man. Right? Here's the point. Luke 16 and 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember... Now Abraham is talking to who? The rich man... Because the rich man, in this parable, he's in torments. Which represents what? When the Edomites and all the other nations go into slavery underneath us, they're going to be in torment. I did a video on this, this parable before and, and broke it down. Okay, um, Luke 16, let's begin at the 24th verse. Luke 16 and 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Now this is when the Edomites are going to be in slavery underneath us. They're going to catch hell, man. There's a scripture where it says, give them double what they gave us. So they're going, the Edomites are going to, every last Edomite too, Jeremiah 30 and 16, every, every one of them shall go into captivity. So every last Edomite is going to catch holy hell underneath us Israelites. All right, guaranteed in the kingdom. So this, what we're about to read here, takes place in the kingdom, when the kingdom is established on the planet earth, right? Luke 16 and 24, and he said, and he cried, and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Yeah, he's he's asking for mercy, because he's he's in uh, um you know he's in captivity, he's in slavery, right? For I am tormented in this flame. Again, that flame is the flame of slavery, the flame of adversity, that the Edomites are going to be going through underneath us Israelites in the kingdom. And not just the Edomites, you're going to have all the other nations with them. All right? They're going to, for a thousand years, they're going to serve us in hardcore slavery, hardcore captivity. All right? That's the judgment, right? So now, let's keep reading. But Abraham said, son, remember. So who's Abraham speaking to? He's, he's speaking to the rich man who represents the Edomites. Now, now check this out. It says, but, but Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, talking about now, receivest thy good things. So Esau right now, he's getting the blessings. The Edomites and all the other nations too that rule with the Edomites, they're getting the blessings. And the Israelites, we're on the bottom. We're getting the short end of the stick. We don't get no respect. You know, everybody makes fun of us, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Not even our own women respect us. Especially the so-called black woman. Why does the so-called black woman uh, on the whole respect the so-called white man? Because it's, it's a very simple expedient. He's in power. That's why. He's in power. Okay? That's why the so-called black woman on the whole respects the so-called white man. Because he's in power. Why does she disrespect the so-called black man? Because he's not in power. 
It's, 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 no, it's not rocket science, people. Women respect power. Okay? That's what they respect. So, it says, but, but Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. Yeah, the curses. That's what, that's what we're getting now. But guess what? We're coming up out of the curses. Let's go from there to Lamentations, the fourth chapter. Okay, Let, let's build on that scripture. Lamentations, the fourth chapter. What does the Bible say? Through thy precepts I get understanding, right? Is that not written? Well, let's get a precept to get more understanding. Lamentations, the fourth chapter. I'm going to prove to you that we are under the curses right now. Lamentations, the fourth chapter, the 21st verse. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, the Edomites, right? That dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. What's the cup? The curses that we're under right now. They're gonna they're gonna go from being on, on us to our enemies, starting with the Edomites. What scripture proves that? Deuteronomy 30. We're gonna go back to Lamentations, but let's read another precept. Deuteronomy the 30th chapter and the seventh verse. Alright, let me put this on. Uh, bear with me for a minute. Let me put this on. Do not disturb mode. Okay. Good. Now, Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy God, his name is Yahweh, will put all these curses, see, upon thine enemies. And that's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. That's why that's why the rich man was 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 bawling for for torment to Abraham, which Abraham represents the Israelites in the parable. He was bawling he was bawling for torment. He was he was seeking mercy, and he ain't gonna get no mercy. Uh, what is that? James, uh, James two and thirteen. Bear with me for a minute. We're gonna go back to all those scriptures. James two and thirteen to prove the point. He ain't gonna get no mercy. Esau didn't show no mercy to us, so he ain't going to get no mercy in the kingdom. Hey, it is right here. James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that show that have showed no mercy. So in the parable, the rich man was calling for mercy in, 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 his, uh, in being tormented. All right? He was calling for mercy, and he, he ain't going to get no mercy. That's what the uh, uh, father Abraham is going to tell him. Look, remember, when you was in your, your power... You, you receive good things, and, and you, you know, you, uh, Lazarus over here, he received evil things. And he received evil things from you. You were, you, were, you were tormenting Lazarus. So now it's time for you to be tormented. See, these Edomites don't think that, that's why they're trying to find every kind of angle. Oh, yeah, uh, see, Apostle Paul was trying to convert Agrippa. No, 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 it don't work that way. Okay, you did the crime, you're going to do the time, all right? We did the crime. That's why we were under these curses. That's why we've been tormented by you Edomites, because we did the crime, all right? And we were punished, so you, like the scripture says, shall thou go on, all together go and punish? Thou shalt, thou shalt, as a matter of fact, oh my goodness, uh, shall thou go on, but what is that? Um, thou shalt not go unpunished. If I type in the word unpunish, unpunish. Because you, you, you eat the mites, you're gonna, you're gonna, you did the crime, you're going to do the time. It's as simple as that. It, that's a good one. Uh, uh, Proverbs 11 and 21, though hand joined in hand, the wicked, who is the Edomites, shall not be unpunished. There you go. You, you remember years ago they had something called Hands Across America. They're trying to heal America, trying to get the so-called black man to get, get together with the so-called white man. Uh, you know, the, the, the point is that they're, they're the wicked and they're going to be punished for what the wickedness that, that they have done. If they're, Now you have uh, Israelites that look like Edomites, okay? So we, we teach that also. But if you have a straight up Edomite, I'm talking about a straight up Edomite, whether he be of the greatest or of the least of his nation, he's going he's gonna to be punished. He's not going to go unpunished because the Heavenly Father is going to judge them as a nation. That's the point. So... Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. That, that's the point. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Who's the seed of the righteous? The Israelites. Okay? Now, where's the one that I want? Um, uh, bear with me for a minute. Uh, yeah, this is it right here. 
Jeremiah 49 and 12. Uh, for thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment, matter of fact, let's just go to it. Let's go to the actual scripture. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup, there's that cup again, have assuredly drunken. And that was us, the Israelites. You know, we didn't want to go off. We didn't want to sin. But the Heavenly Father made us sin and then turned around and punished us by putting these nations over us. The last nation to be put over us were the Edomites, right? So we received the judgment. That, that was the curses, right? They whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken, right? And art thou, who's the Lord speaking to through the prophet Jeremiah? The Edomites, beginning with them. Are you, art thou, he that shall altogether go unpunished? That's the point. Thou shall not go and punish, but thou shall surely drink of it. There you go. They're going to drink of the curses. They're going to drink of the adversity. They're going to drink of the slavery that we were under. They're going to be under it. All the nations. All right. Beginning with the Edomites. Every one of them is going into captivity. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Okay. Matter of fact, let's get that. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Then we're going to go back to all the scriptures. All the other precepts. Right. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Let's, let's establish that right off the bat. All the other nations, every last one of them, are going into captivity. So if you happen to be of the nation of Edom, you're going into slavery underneath us Israelites. It's as simple as that. This is not rocket science, people. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. There you go. And all thine adversaries. Now, a list of our adversaries is in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Gives you a list of our adversaries. Guess what nation it starts with? The nation of Edom. Our adversaries, our enemies. Okay? And all thine adversaries. He's speaking to us Israelites. All of our adversaries, our enemies. Start with the nation of Edom. Every one of them. Not some of them. Every one of them. This is a powerful precept. You can't get around this. Every one of them shall go into captivity and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. There you go. And that's going to take place in the kingdom. Now, let's go back to... Uh, so, again, remember, Esau is going to have uh, judgment without what? Without mercy. Because remember, the rich man was trying to beg Father Abraham for mercy in his torment, right? But James 2 and 13 tells us, for he shall have judgment without mercy, that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiced against judgment. There you go. So going back to Deuteronomy 30 and 7, and, all, and the Lord thy God, his name is Yahweh, will put all these curses upon thine enemies. That's what we read about in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, right? The, the curses that Lazarus was under now is being transferred to the rich man, okay? That's what was happening in the parable. And the Lord thy, thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee and on, on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. And that lines up with Jeremiah 30 and 16. Okay? They're not going to go unpunished. Now, let's go back to Lamentation, the fourth chapter. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. So we're telling you Edomites to enjoy yourself right now. This is your kingdom. You know, have a ball. Enjoy yourself. Because when, once you go down, and Yahweh is coming to take you down, 1 Corinthians 15 and 24, once you go down, that's it. You're going to go, beginning with your top leaders, your, 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 your top banking families, you're going to go into slavery. You're going to be bound with chains, Psalms 149th chapter, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Who's going to do that? The Israelites are going to do that. And your top wicked elite, they know they're going into slavery. They know they're going into captivity. And there's nothing, it's inevitable. There's nothing you can do about it. That is your manifest destiny. Okay? Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. What is that cup? The cup of the curses, slavery, adversity. The same thing that the rich man was bitching about to Father Abraham. That cup is coming for you. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Right, you're going to be exposed. Okay, you're being exposed now. The punishment of thine iniquities accomplish, O daughter of Zion. See, we will, we will put under punishment. That's them curses. 
Why? It tells you in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter why the Heavenly Father brought curses upon us. And one of those curses was to be in slavery underneath all the nations. The last nation for us to be in slavery underneath was the Edomites, is the Edomites. Okay? And it tells you why we went, we, the curses was put on us because of our wickedness. Okay? Because of our, our sins, the sins of our forefathers, which we are our forefathers. We understand this. All right? So it says, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, the Israelites. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. What's ring, does, what rings a bell here? Slavery. Slavery. Okay, that's why we went into slavery. All right? He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. Uh-oh. Judgment. Judgment. You're not going to be unpunished. Remember, we read the scripture. The Heavenly Father will visit your iniquity, your wickedness, especially the wickedness that you did against his chosen people, the Israelites. Case in point, slavery. You're going to pay for every last quota, if I can bring that word out, quota of wickedness. Okay? You're going to pay. That's what, see, this is what Vocab and his wacky tacky pals are trying to do. They're trying to skirt their responsibility of taking judgment. They're looking for that loophole. There is no loophole, man. You did the crime, you're going to do the time, okay? You're going to be put in punishment, okay? He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. There you go. How you get around that? He will discover thy sin. So Agrippa was an Edomite. So in the future, Agrippa himself is going to be in slavery because everyone's reincarnated. That's, that's another thing the wacky-tacky Christian don't understand, the, the concept of reincarnation. So let's get back to the parable and finally prove the point. Then I'm going to go to this video here. Luke 16 and 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Why? Because he's serving punishment. The rich man now, which represents the Edomites, now they serve in punishment, beginning with their top banking families. Remember, they're going into slavery. They're going to be rounded up. Chains are going to be put on them. Shackles. All right. Psalms 149 chapter goes into it. Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, which represents the Israelites, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. This is all a metaphor uh, that the Israelites may show uh, the rich man mercy. But remember, James 2 and 13, he shall receive no mercy. That showed no mercy. Edomites didn't show us no mercy when they had the upper hand over us. So when we have the upper hand over them, we ain't going to show them no mercy. We're going to put more hell on them than they put on us. Okay? Again, pursuant to the scripture, give, give him double. Okay? Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Now here's the point. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime now, was it, what does it say in Lamentations? O daughter of Edom, rejoice. Right? Why? Rejoice, why? Because you're in, you're in your power right now. Enjoy yourself. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Yeah, you receive the blessings. And likewise, Lazarus uh, evil things. We receive the curses. It's all about blessings and curses, right? But now he is comforted. Now we're going to receive the blessings, and that's going to be in the kingdom. Where are we going to be comforted? Where's the uh, where's Lazarus, which represents the Israelites? Where is he going to be comforted? In the kingdom, right? But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. So what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven? The Israelites are going to be blessed. They're going to be underneath the blessings. Deuteronomy 28 chapter, beginning at the first verse. But the Edomites and the other nations, they're going to be under what? The curses. Uh, Deuteronomy 30th chapter, the seventh verse. Right? That's how this thing works. Okay, so reading on, now here's the point. And beside all this, between us and you, who's the us? Us Israelites and you Edomites. There is a great gulf fixed. What, what, does, what does the word gulf mean? A separation. Remember, I read that to you in Deuteronomy 32 when the Mosai separated the nations. So no uh, vocab. Uh, uh, Agrippa cannot become a Christian. Agrippa cannot become an Israelite. The Apostle Paul can't make Agrippa an Israelite or Christian. 
And even Agrippa said, you almost persuaded me to be a... Agrippa. Look, the Apostle Paul was being crafty. The Apostle Paul was known to be crafty. And I'll read that scripture too. Because of the precarious situation he was in. The man was in, he was in, in bonds. All right? He was in, he was in uh, shackles. All right? He was trying to, uh, uh, like the scripture say in Proverbs 15 and 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath. He was giving Agrippa a soft answer. He was being crafty with Agrippa because of the condition he was in, the Apostle Paul. He was known to do that, man. He wasn't trying to make it. <laughs> this is totally ridiculous. That's why, we, that's why we don't take you seriously, vocab. It's totally ridiculous. He wasn't trying to make Agrippa a Christian as in an Israelite. You can't make... Who the hell... Apostle Paul doesn't have that power. <laughs> the only one who has that power is the Heavenly Father to make a nation... Who they're, to make a person be what nation he wants them to be. The only one that, that does that is the Heavenly Father. And he's not going to... That's confusion. He's not going to take an Edomite and make an Edomite an Israelite. That's confusion. He's already separated the nations. We read in Deuteronomy 32nd chapter. Okay? So you, you guys are stretching, man. <laughs> you dudes are stretching. All right? And you're stretching because you you err not knowing the scriptures. I'm talking about vocab. I'm talking about the guy that you're going to hear in the video. You guys are stretching. And I hope you see this video. Luke 16 and 26. And beside all this... Between us and you, there's a great separation. The word gulf means separation. There's a great gulf fixed so that they, the Edomites, which would pass from hence to you, oh, I'm sorry, so that they, the Israelites, which would pass from hence to you cannot. So a nation, a member or an Edomite cannot pass on to an Israelite and become an Israelite. Impossible. That's the point being made here. Okay, let's read it again. I'm going to read it nice and slow so you can see it and understand for yourself. So that they, talking about the Israelites, this is Abraham talking to the rich man. So that they, the Israelites, which would pass from, from hence to you, you Edomites, the rich man, cannot. So an Edomite cannot become an Israelite. And an Israelite cannot become an Edomite. It's going to say that in the latter part of the verse. Neither can they pass to us, the Edomites, Pass to us Israelites that would come from thence. There you go. There you go. That's plain. What that saying in a nutshell is an Edomite cannot become an Israelite, and an Israelite cannot become an Edomite. Impossible. Okay? So, no, Apostle Paul wasn't trying to make that Edomite Agrippa an Israelite or a Christian, which the Christians were Israelites. You get it? Okay? Uh, the 26th verse. And besides, there is a great, uh, this is in the NLT version, and besides, there is a great chasm separating us. Another word for gulf, chasm, which means a separation. You see, there is a great gulf chasm separating us. When the Most High separated to the nations. Did we not just read that in Deuteronomy 32nd chapter? There you go. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. <laughs> Plain. Okay? Ain't no crossovers over here. The, the, um, this, ain't, this ain't basketball, man. <laughs> uh, uh, Apostle Paul wasn't trying to make Agrippa cross over to the land of the Christians or Israelites. All right, vocab? <laughs> all right. So we made the point, right? This, now we can go to the video. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to play a good portion of this video. Um, by uh, so you can clear by Elder Karadza. As you can see, I'm almost done with the video, so I'm going to bring it back. I was watching it earlier, I'm going to bring it back, and let's check it out. They're denigrating the authority of the New Testament. They're not just disagreeing with Paul when they say what they're about to say. I want you to see what they Yeah, he's talking about the Sakari. Now, the thing with the Sakari is those guys are novices. And the scriptures don't lie, all right? Beginning with al they're novices. They never, and al he never really came in the right way anyway. Okay, he was he was kind of like a problem child in, in, the, in the Israelite thing of al -Zah. He started with GMS, okay? And he was pretty much a problem child. He had, uh, he had a problem taking authority. Okay, 
So after a while, he became proud and formed his own thing. And this is what you have today. And that's why we're not surprised that the Sakari is, is, is going off like that. You know, they have a problem with the writings of the Apostle Paul because they're unlearned. The scriptures tell you, Second Peter uh, 3 and 16. Matter of fact, let's go to that real quick. You know, they have the right, they have a problem with some of the writings of Apostle Paul is because they're unlearned. It's, it's just that simple. And one of the reasons they're unlearned is because they came in as a novice. All right? And they were lifted up with pride. One thing you don't want, when you come in into this thing of ours, to those of you brothers that are new, you, you don't want to be, you don't want to wax with pride or, or become or become proud. Um, how does that scripture go? Uh, the, the heavenly father, that's in the book of James, the heavenly father resisteth the proud. Okay? There's a scripture where it says, knowledge puffeth up. You're learning this great knowledge, all of a sudden you become proud. You know, that leads to your destruction, man. You, we, you have to be humble with this thing of ours, okay? Uh, Second Thessalonians, the third chapter. And, um, oh, I'm reading the wrong one here. Second Peter, that's what I want to read. Second Peter 3, which, yeah, the head, Peter, the head disciple, which became the head apostle. He's, he's talking about Paul. This is what he says about Apostle Paul. Right? An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, and Paul was he was known to suffer, right? Um, even our even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. So Apostle Peter is talking about Paul, right? As also in all his epistles, yeah, like the uh, uh, letter to the Colossians, letter to the Thessalonians, letter to the Ephesians, etc. You get the idea, right? His epistles. Speaking in them of these things, in which some things are, some things hard to be understood. And, and we see that now. That's why certain guys have a problem with the writings of Apostle Paul, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle or fight against. Okay, and we've seen that now with this this group, uh, uh, the Sakari, which is uh, which is uh, your most recent example. Okay, let's read that again. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. See, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. That's one of the reasons why they wear them hats on their head. When the Apostle Paul clearly said a man ought not to cover his head. Why? Because he is the image and glory of the Heavenly Father. Clearly the Apostle Paul said this. But they have a problem with that. Why? Because they are unstable, right? And they're unlearned. And they're proud, you know. Uh, let's, uh, let's see... Um, Condemnation. Let's get there. Condemnation. Let's read that scripture. It is right here. Uh, it says, 1 Timothy 3 and 6, Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And that's what you have with this group, beginning with their leader. Okay, let's get back to the video with Paul when they say what they're about to say. I want you to see what they say here, everybody. This is a very fascinating thing, too, because here you have um, biblical authority being replaced by something else, which is essentially the authority of the group itself. Herod Agrippa was told by... Uh, vocab, he's being disingenuous because there's something he believes in called replacement theology. What about that? You, re you replace Satan... Sir, um, Certain tenets in the Bible, you, you've replaced it with your own warped understanding. Talking to you, vocab. What's up with uh, replacement theology? Where is that in the scriptures? Okay, so you're being disingenuous talking about this group here. Anyway, let's move on. Paul, that Paul wanted him to not be in chains and that Paul wanted him to be saved. What does that have to do with the word of God? Because, because Herod isn't... Paul didn't want him to be saved. Okay, Paul didn't want him to be saved. Paul 
Again, the Apostle Paul was being crafty in his speech. He was known to be crafty. Let me show you that. He was given a soft answer because of the precarious situation he was in. Okay. Uh, here's an example of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul being crafty. All right. Second Corinthians, the twelfth chapter, and that's what this knowledge teaches you. It does it not teach us to be subtle? Right. Let's see if that's not so. Proverbs. The first chapter, you know, agree with thine adversary while, while, is that not written? Agree with thine adversary while, while thou art in the way with him. All right. Proverbs, the first chapter, the second verse, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, which the apostle Paul knew. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtility to the simple. So the Apostle Paul was being subtle with Agrippa. Because of the position Agrippa was in and the position Apostle Paul was in. The Apostle um, uh, Agrippa, uh, Agrippa was in um, the position of uh, dominance over the Apostle Paul. So... The Apostle Paul was looking for a little leniency because of the situation he was in. So it would be wise for him to, to, to speak soft, use soft words instead of inflammatory words. Come on, man. But once again, that's these wacky-tacky Christians. They're very disingenuous. They're very uh, hip, you know, hypocritical and disingenuous. They're a bunch of liars. Okay, tell the truth, man. Proverbs 1 and 4. To give subtility to the simple... To the young man, knowledge and discretion. See? A wise man will, will hear and will increase learning, such as the Apostle Paul. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Yeah, the Apostle Paul was being wise, man, because of the situation he was in. Okay? Uh, now, here's an example of the Apostle Paul being crafty. Okay? 2 Corinthians 12 and um, he's talking to the Corinthians, right? The Israelites that were li living in Corinth. This is what he says, Second Corinthians 12 and 15, And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Yeah, because um, Apostle Paul was a dis disciplinarian. So he had to administer discipline. And you know how people inherently, they, they don't like to be disciplined, right? But here's the point. But, but be it so... I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. See? Now, let's look at uh, the NLT version. 2 Corinthians 12, 16. Some of you admit I was not a burden to you, but others still think I was sneaky and took advantage of you by trickery. So the Apostle Paul was known to be, uh, to be subtle. All right, he was known to be subtle, and that's exactly what he was being with Agrippa. Okay, so therein lies the point. Let's get back to the video. He wasn't trying to convert Agrippa, get it right. And eventually, here's the thing eventually, all these nations, including the Edomites, eventually they're going to come and learn of our ways anyway. Now, does that mean they're going to become Israelites when they learn of our ways? No. Remember, the Heavenly Father separated the nations permanently, okay? An Israelite cannot become an Edomite. This is what the wacky tacky Christian don't get. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. I'm going to show you all the nations are going to eventually follow our ways anyway. They're going to have no choice because they're going to be in slavery underneath us. They're going to learn of our ways, okay? Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, the second chapter... And um, the second verse, this is, this is going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. When is this going to happen? In the kingdom. The Israelites are going to be set up, right? And all nations shall flow unto it, every last nation. Why? Why are they going to flow unto it? Because they're going to be our slaves. Let's keep reading. 
And many people shall go and say, Come you, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. Right? Just like the Apostle Paul was speaking about the ways of the Lord. And <laughs> even Agrippa said, You almost convinced me to be a Christian. Right? Which is impossible because, like I said, the Christian, when they were Israelites, they were being called Christians. And, uh, <coughs> an Edomite, <coughs> excuse me, an Edomite, an Edomite cannot become an Israelite. And an Israelite cannot become an Edomite. Remember the parable I read to you. Uh, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the uh, house of, of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. See? For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Why? Because all the other nations are going to be our slaves. So eventually, they're going to learn of our ways anyway. Okay? So there you go. So that's another point that can be made. Because but they're going to learn of our ways in slavery. Okay? They're going to learn of our ways in slavery because they're going to be slaves underneath us Israelites. Herod is an Edomite, and you believe you believe white folks are Edomites, correct? Do you know do you know Agrippa used to be at the temple every Sabbath? Did you know that? What about it? So it, it Paul said he, wa he wanted him to be just like himself. Paul said he wanted Agrippa to be like him. When did See, Alizar is not explaining it correctly. He's not handling that guy's uh, point. It's all about point counterpoint. Alizar's counterpoint <coughs> is not handling that guy's point that he's trying to make correctly. Okay. Partly because Alizar was being emotional. Okay? Again, uh, uh, scriptures don't lie. At least being a novice, he's lifted up with pride and fallen to the condemnation of the devil. Okay? Paul's will become God's will. It well, well, he said, well, Agrippa asked him if he would, become, if he would make him a... So it was the wrong answer. It was, it was the wrong answer. Just the wrong answer, man. Christian. Paul juxtaposes his will from God's will in Romans 9. Go ahead. Paul would never, Paul would not deceive a bunch of people in the room with Agrippa by saying that he wanted all of them to be just like him after Agrippa asked oh, him he if he wanted. Well, oh, wait a minute. Paul was being a little de deceptive in his speech because ultimately Paul knew that Agrippa couldn't become a Christian. He knew that. Or as in an Israelite. Right? But he was being, this guy who's speaking, he, he did, he, he not knowing the scripture. Let's let's say that again. Let's say that again. Paul said he wa he wanted him to be just like himself. Paul said he wanted Agrippa to be like him. When did, when did Paul he was being crafty, my man. The apostle Paul was being crafty. Why? Because of the situation he was in. He was given a soft answer to turn away the wrath. I mean, the man was in prison. Okay, he was in bounds. Does does does, does the speaker understand that the situation the apostle Paul was in? Let's get Proverbs 15 and 1. See, that's the angle they're trying to come with. But either way, they're going to they're gonna lose because a, a, an Edomite cannot become a Christian. An Edomite, the Edomites were created to be the wicked. And that's what they're going to be. All right? Proverbs 15 goes back to that vessel unto uh, dishonor that the Apostle Paul talked about. He talked about a vessel unto honor, which are the Israelites, and a vessel unto dishonor, which are the Edomites and all the other nations. They can't change who they are. Proverbs 15 and 1. A soft answer. This is what the Apostle Paul was given Agrippa. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. See? So it would, it would make sense for the Apostle Paul to give grievous words to stir up anger. Come on. He was being subtile. This knowledge teaches you to be subtile. Proverbs, the first chapter. Right? So there you go. It was an example of subtility. Get it right, man. Paul said he, wa he wanted him to be just like himself. Paul said he wanted Agrippa to be like him. When did, when did Paul's will become God? But the Apostle Paul fully well know that Agrippa couldn't become like him. Agrippa is an Edomite. The Apostle Paul was an Israelite. An Edomite cannot become an Israelite, you stupid, wacky-tacky Christian. Let me say that one more time. An Edomite... Because there's a separation. Remember the parable. There's a great gulf fix, a chasm. An Edomite cannot become an Israelite. It's just that simple. It's not, it's not hard to understand. 
It well, didn't. well, he said. Well, Agrippa asked him if he would be, if he would make him a Christian. Paul juxtaposes his will from God. Apostle Paul cannot make Agrippa a Christian. Apostle Paul don't have that much power. You're giving him too much power, man. Apostle Paul cannot make Agrippa a Christian. Okay. Furthermore, if you listen to this knowledge is truth, you're not making the person listen to this knowledge is truth. Guess who's doing it? The Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father opened up the minds of people to listen to this knowledge and this truth and closes the minds. Not us. We just, our job is just to teach. Whoever listens and comes into it, we didn't make them listen and come into it. The Heavenly Father did. All right? How's that go? Uh, uh, one, one man water for another man uh, planteth, but the Most High giveth the increase. There you go. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture. Go ahead. Paul would never, Paul would not deceive a bunch of people in the room with Agrippa by saying, Wrong. Paul was known to use guile. He was being a little deceptive, so you're wrong. You're wrong. You are not knowing the scriptures. But he wanted all of them to be just like him after Agrippa asked oh, him if he wanted him that. to be a Christian. Uh, 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 you just make, you're making Paul the author of confusion. Oh, okay. Is Paul the author of confusion? Yes, he is. No. Yes. No. You're making Paul the author of confusion. <laughs> Alizar got emotional. He got emotional. All right. Okay. Is Paul the author? And, then, and when you see, when you do that, that that's admitting weakness. You're showing weakness. First of all, you're getting emotional. Second of all, you're not you're not thinking rationally. You're not using sound reasoning. But again, this is what happens when you're a novice, being lifted up with pride. You fall into condemnation of the devil. Okay. Uh, Alizar was not taught correctly. Like I said, when he first came in, he, he he didn't he wasn't he didn't learn to be grounded and rooted. Okay, he was like a problem child. You know, those who know know. Okay, he just wanted he just wanted to get that fame. He came, he came in. He saw how powerful this knowledge was. He saw he could be you know become a leader. You know, and and have people following him. You know, like the scriptures say the the. the Heap disciples unto themselves. How's that go? That's not what this knowledge is about, man. Uh, heaping disciples. I think the word heaping is in there. Got to read that scripture. You got a lot of... and uh, Alizar ain't the only guy like that. You got a lot of Israelites that, you know, they, they're they not even well learned, but they want men to follow them. Okay? They want to be leaders of men. You, we saw that with uh, tried, tried and Refined. The group out there in Chicago. You had that that dude. Uh, what's his name? Uh, what the hell is his name? The, the, the leader of that tried and refined. Tried and refined, right group. The leader, forgot his name. He wanted men to uh, follow him. Forgive me, I forgot the guy's name. Maybe he'll come to me. Heaping disciples. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Again, now, this is, wait a minute, this is the Apostle Paul. He warned about guys like that. We're going to read it too. Acts 20 and 30. We don't make ourselves leaders in this thing of ours. Yahweh Bashim Yahshai makes you a leader. Okay. Uh, Acts 20 and 30. Let's read that. Again, these are the words of the Apostle Paul, right? He said, Acts 20 and 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit. Take heed, meaning we got to. You gotta watch how we how we conduct ourselves. What are we watching for? Pride, foolish pride, right? Um, uh, uh, lies. We, we try to make sure we speak a hundred percent truth. All right. We try to make sure we guard ourselves against foolish pride. There's certain things as a as a leader. If the Holy Spirit have made you a leader. There's certain things you look for and guard against. Remember the Apostle Paul. He said he keep under his body. At least when he's preached to others, he himself become a castaway. You can become a castaway if you become too too foolishly proud. All right, if you start bringing in lies into the doctrine, eventually Yahweh Shimiyasha will will cast you away because you're not being truthful, you're not being honest. Right? 
So that's why it says, take heed. The Apostle Paul said for us to take heed. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. Right? Watch how you conduct yourself in this faith over the which the Holy Spirit have made you overseer. So the Holy Spirit makes a man an overseer. Okay? Not us. To feed the church of the Heavenly Father, right? Which he have purchased with his own blood. Who's that? Yahweh Shai. This, this, these men that come into this thing and learn, they're not our men. They're Yahweh Shai's men. Let, let's not get that twisted. They're Yahweh Shai's men. So we better watch how we deal with them. We better watch how we treat them. Scripture is very clear on this. If you offend those little ones that believe in Yahweh Shai, it's better than that what? That what? That a millstone be tied around your neck. Remember, that's written. So we got to, it's not just about coming in and you 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 uh, overseer over men and you can just treat them any old way you want to treat them. No, it don't work that way. No. Okay. Uh, it says, over the which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers to feed the church of the Heavenly Father, which he have purchased with his own blood. He's talking about Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai purchased his church with his own blood. He had to shed his blood for, for the elect. Okay. For us to get this knowledge is truth. Don't forget that. For I know this, this is the Apostle Paul warning us, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. How do you spot these grievous wolves? Let's keep reading. Not sparing the flock. They don't care about the, the, the uh, congregation. As long as they're getting the accolades and praises and they're, 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 they're on top, you know. You know, they're getting the admiration, especially of the women. Okay, because you know women, they're hypergamous. They want to go for the top guy. Okay, uh, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves, listen good, shall men arise speaking perverse things. There you go. To draw away disciples after them. Yeah. And that's what you see with that group. I have to call it like it is. Let's read it again. Acts, Acts 20 and 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. And over the years, that group, the leader has has spoken perverse things. What he just said in that video was perverse. Yeah, Paul was the author of confu confusion. No, he was not. You, you're just unlearned. 2 Peter 3 and 16. Those that are unlearned, they, they what? They um, not understand the writings of the Apostle Paul, they wrestle against. They wrestle against his, his words because they're unlearned. The Apostle Paul wasn't the author of confusion. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that this, by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So the Apostle Paul was, he was very emotional about that thing. About certain men coming in and corrupting the flock. And heaping disciples unto themselves. Right? And this is what you have. Alright? So there you go. Let's get back to the video. So you got to beware of guys like that. The author of confusion? Yes, he is. No. Yes. No. No, no, no he's not. From, for the most is not the author of confusion. You're the one that's confused, Alazar. Okay? And the guy that's talking to you, he's confused too. <laughs> God is not the author of confusion and God inspired Paul. Is Paul the author of confusion? Well, he, what he said there is true. Which his name is not God. Yahweh is not the author of confusion off of confusion and Yahweh actually taught Apostle Paul that that is correct he is no yes all the praises and the honor goes to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Bahashem Recha Ha Kudash and double honors to the elder apostles now Elder Karatza makes some good points in this video he goes into uh, Agrippa Agrippa's nature the the um, how he was more tolerant than the previous Agrippa all right, and he was cur curious in, in things concerning the Israelites, that Agrippa that the Apostle Paul had to deal with. But even he couldn't be persuaded. Like he said, all, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Right? When he heard the conver conversion, the powerful conversion of the Apostle Paul from Saul to the Apostle Paul. He was intrigued by that, Agrippa. But nevertheless, he wasn't going to become no Christian. He can't. As much as Agrippa would have wanted to become a Christian, he cannot. Why? Because the Christians were Israelites. An Edomite cannot become an Israelite. It's impossible. Okay? 
know, the bishops of Great Millstone, honors as well to you, brethren. Shalom to you, few sisters, and shalom to the hopefully elect. Peace to you. I want to touch on this, go into this video that was posted on Vocab Malone's page about the Sakari Israelites, where this priest, um, Alazar of the Sakari, says that Paul was the author of confusion. And this does kind of happen. And, and when he said it, when Alazar said it, you could tell he was, he was in a heightened state of being emotional. He was being impatient with the guy that uh, was speaking to him. That's not, that's not the way to go. You know, you got you to gotta become patient. All right. <laughs> now, if the guy is a total moron, right, if, he, if he's just scoffing and scorning, then you just dismiss him. And you and you go back to teaching. You ignore him. But again, you know, this is what happens. You're trying to be a leader, and you, and you yourself doesn't have what it takes, the quality to be to be a leader. Okay. <clears throat> when you don't want to do the legwork and really go into the understanding of what certain things mean, such as the you got to do the legwork. That's what we teach you at GMS Great Millstone. You got to do that legwork. Ripper. It's hard for them to stand on that. This also happens when you get into different debates and then you kind of get twisted into following other form of doctrines, right? Because there's a lot of doctrines that says Paul was the author of confusion. Paul, letters of Paul uh, wasn't authentic, but then Sakari says some of them are authentic. So this is bringing, you know, and this is why this Christian said the Lord is not an author of confusion. And um, Paul would be an author of confusion to some because the letters of Paul is hard to be understood, right? So By them that are unlearned. To us, the letters of the Apostle Paul is easy. To us that, <laughs> to, to us that know and understand the truth, his letters are easy, man, to understand. But to them that are unlearned, it's, it's hard for them to understand. Like case in point, they, un, they don't understand that uh, you had the Israelites that were scattered among the other nations. And that's who the Apostle Paul was sent to teach. Israelites that were scattered among the other nations, being called by those nations. All right? One of the things they don't understand is the history that was happening back then. So that now they think that the Lord is going to save everybody. If you're a non-Israelite, you can be saved. Yeah, you can be saved, but you can be saved for what? Slavery. You're going into slavery underneath the real Israelites. That's the long and short of it. Okay? Um, let's get a scripture real quick before we get started. And we dive into this lesson. The more we go into Agrippa, the more we start understanding things as we go on. Let's go to Romans 1 and 1. Okay, it says, Paul... A servant of Yahweh Shai, says Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel, right? Separate, like holy, of Yahweh, separated unto the gospel of Yahweh. So this is serious words here. But to say that Paul, every word of the letter of Paul was not authenticated is because, as they say, you lack hermeneutics. <laughs> Which hermeneutics just goes is the study of method, method, methodology. This is the same Apostle Paul that said, I say the truth in Yahweh, I, I lie not. So how, al how is the Apostle Paul going to become the author of confusion? When the same Apostle Paul said, I say the truth in Yahweh, I, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. All right. So the Apostle Paul was very aware of what he was saying and teaching. And he was not spreading confusion. But you being unlearned and emotional, you're the one that's confused. Okay? <clears throat> okay, method, uh, method, ological principles of interpretation of the Bible. It's just say, you know, I don't know why they say that. But sometimes you got to sound deep when it comes to these debates. But we keep it. Yeah, well, they do that to be disingenuous. The scriptures speak about use words easy to be understood. Yahweh Shai said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Let, let our conversation be simple. 
But they use those, vocab is good for that. They use those $50 words to, uh, to confuse the listener. Just keep it simple. But you're going to find out the wacky tacky Christian, they're very disingenuous. Simple. Acts 26 and 29. Uh, where are we at? Acts 26 and 29, going into Paul and Agrippa. We're going to try to dive into this. Be patient. I got a lot of commentary. Um, not all commentary is 100% foolproof, but when you get a commentary, you go to other studies and certain things, and it kind of brings it all home once you start really understanding what's going on. So it says, and Paul said, I would to God, and not only to thou, I would to the power, not only to thou, but also all that hear me this day. We're both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds, which goes back to chains. So you have to see what's going on at that time. So when these Christians come up with the Agrippa, the Agrippa, the Lord try to convert um, Agrippa. I already know the story on Agrippa and his history on Harad Agrippa II, right? But we're going to read a little more commentary first. Okay, so it says almost... And, and the better question is, like I said, the wacky tacky Christian will use that as a point to prove that um, all, all the nations can be saved. You know, they'll use the example of Agrippa. But the point is, can the Apostle Paul convert Agrippa to become a Christian or an Israelite? The answer is no. It's impossible. So the point is moot. The point is moot, okay? Because no Edomite can be converted to become an Israelite. It's impossible. And, and the parable of the rich man proves it. There's a great separation. Nations cannot integrate. All right. So, you know, at this point, I'll leave it there. It's over an hour. I, I certainly didn't intend for this video to go that long, but it is what it is. Ho hopefully you hung in there and you got every drop of edification out of this uh, out of this uh, video. Um, you want to go check this video by um, Elder Karadzizar. All right. It's a pretty good video. Like I said, I was almost to the end, which inspired me to do this video. So you want to go check his video out for more understanding. He goes into the different Agrippas. One was more tolerant than the other. He makes that point. But the point that I made in my video is that, you know, nations cannot assimilate. Agrippa was an Edomite. Apostle Paul was a Hebrew Israelite. An Edomite cannot become an Israelite. An Israelite cannot become an Edomite. Okay? <laughs> so no matter what, the Apostle Paul was being, which at that time he was being crafty, he was being sneaky, no matter what, that's the final conclusion. So if you wacky-tacky Christians, you're trying to say that the Apostle Paul was trying to convert uh, Agrippa, <laughs> you ear not knowing the scriptures, man. All right, so with that, see you in the next one.